I've always wanted freedom. And so that led into crypto. What pushed you to go to Mexico and have the birth there? Mexico is a great country. It's a great flag to have. As I grew up with many Mexicans in America, the new flex is having passports all up and down. I really want to have as many passports as I can. We don't know what the world's going to look like in 2030, 2040, 2050. The United States and America are two different things. All right, we're here with Dan, our client from the United States. He just had a child in Mexico. His child just got a second citizenship or fourth citizenship, potentially. Fourth, yeah. Fourth citizenship. She's not even four months old. And she already has four passports. passports. Let's go. You also got a citizenship by exception, which we will discuss in a bit. And overall, your views on the United States, on the world, Mm -hmm. on money, on how citizenship works have changed a lot over the last, let's say, nine months. 100% from the start of your of your child, of the 100%, pregnancy. 100%, 100%. So tell me a little bit about what started your journey towards getting another passport, not thinking, okay, the US is the best country in the world, I only need one passport. What started that journey for you? I've always had an enact uh, want for freedom. I've always wanted freedom and uh, credit. I'm known in the credit world for helping people get the funding and, and leveraging credit to build wealth. And so that led into crypto, which crypto led into this world of, wow, I'm not really free unless I diversify my citizenship. I'm not actually free unless I diversify my residencies. So that path from credit to crypto to citizenship is is what led that to all happen. And what was the first step? Obviously, you you paid for another company to help you with that. Mm-hmm. Then you, you found us here mm-hmm. at Wealthy Expat. What was kind of the first step? What did you want to do first? You wanted to get residency. I knew you had Mexican residency at some mm-hmm. point. That was your first step. That was my first step. Mm. I did have Mexican residency. I ended up doing that myself. Um, but I knew that I needed a passport. And so that's what I reached out to you about. And then it was an amazing experience. Let me just put it that way. And what pushed you to give birth in Indonesia? Because uh, Sorry, not in Indonesia. Your wife is Indonesian. Mm-hmm. So the passport that your child would get would be Indonesian and American. Right. What pushed you to go to Mexico and have the birth there? Well, Mexico is a great country. Um, and Mexico is in North America, which is a great flag to have. Uh, the other thing that I do like about Mexico is because I grew up with many Mexicans in America. I'm familiar with the culture. I love the food. Uh, Love to learn Spanish. Uh, La Paz, Mexico is absolutely beautiful in the Baja. Uh, But what's nice about Mexico um, is I think that Mexico is going to continue to accelerate its stage on the world. And me knowing that my ultimate goal was to renounce U.S. citizenship, I wanted to diversify my citizenships and why waste a birth? If my baby's going to leverage me, why not leverage the baby, right? And unfortunately, as beautiful as Indonesia is, it doesn't have many opportunities as a as a travel document. And right now, Indonesia, you can only be a dual citizen until the age of 18, mm. until they change that. Um, so right now, my daughter will have the ability to be an Indonesian citizen until the age of 18, then she has to make a decision unless they change the law, which they've been talking about doing. So I wanted to give my daughter dual citizenship with American citizenship Mexican citizenship. And if my daughter at one point wants to renounce U.S. citizenship, she can do that without having to do all the things that I had to do. Got it. And then when it comes to citizenship by exception, because we did that program, we can't say what country that was for mm-hmm. privacy reasons. It's obviously a big investment. It's it's a lot of moves that you need to do. You need to start a business in a country you don't know. Yeah. If you're already doing Mexico, mm-hmm. what was the push towards doing citizenship by exception? Was it renouncing U.S. citizenship, having yeah. just another country? I didn't want to put my eggs in one basket again, right? So when I renounced my citizenship, if I only have Mexico, now I'm not in a better situation, <laughs> right? So I wanna be able to diversify my passports. I say the new flex is having passports all up and down. I really wanna have as many passports as I can so that way I have the access to do banking and be able to diversify my investments and go around the world. We don't know what the world's going to look like in 2030, 2040, 2050. So me wanting to have a macro view of things is the reason why I wanted to do citizenship by birth, citizenship by an exception. And at some point, I would probably even consider a citizenship by investment with Turkey. And you were considering doing Turkey before I was doing even the birth in Mexico. I think you were just thinking, let me do the Turkish passport and that was it. I was. I was doing some research. There's a lot of fluff in the game. I, I say there's not a lot of stuff and a lot of fluff. I feel like you're the only person that brings the stuff. Uh, and just having some real conversations with you regarding those options, 
just helped me realize the reality of the situation. You know, people say you can get citizenship in, in, the, in the Caribbean in, in two to three months. It's not the actual reality. You can't just get citizenship in Turkey in six months like you used to with the mass immigration from other countries. Turkey is a great country. It has a lot of opportunity. I do love Turkey. Uh, but the reality is it's going to take a longer time than I wanted to wait for. And so the citizenship by exception program for me was more up my alley because it's giving me the timeline that I want to renounce U.S. citizenship. Right. And you're considering still doing Turkey in the future. I am. Yeah. I am. 100%. For now, you'll be living in Mexico yep. for two years or... Yep. Well, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. <laughs> to naturalize as a to Mexican. To naturalize, yeah, right. 100%. Because yeah. you, have, you have the permanent residency based on the birth. Right. Your wife has a permanent residency, and then you can both naturalize after two years. 100%. And I can always come back and fulfill my residency stay if we want to move right now for family reasons or whatever. But the nice thing is, is having citizenship and birth with in Mexico, as you know, is you get immediate permanent residency. So I can always come back and do that later if my wife wants to leave. So we have options. And when it comes to renouncing U.S. citizenship, you're considering, you're telling me, how is it to, to travel on yeah. another passport? Yeah. What if I, should I do the Mexico thing first? You're trying to make a lot of money in the next couple months mm -hmm. or years, I would say. You've already made a lot of money, but you're trying mm -hmm. to even take it bigger. How's renouncing looking for you? Renouncing is, is, is a real option. You know, the next step is uh, handling the residencies with the, with the passport that I have through exception. And... Uh, then going through the proper channels and making sure that the taxes are correct and making sure that I've, I've done my due diligence. I think it's really important that uh, you do things right and you don't rush them. Um, but and, th and this is part of a, a shameless plug. You're not asking me to do this. I'm just telling everybody this is the part of working with a great person like Wealthy Expat is once you do one transaction, you can continue to do other transactions. And so I'm going to be using the same lawyer that you use personally that helped you successfully, you know, cut ties with the country and, and go where you really wanted to go. That's the goal. Yeah. And try to pay as little exit tax as possible legally. Yep. So you don't legally, don't to, legally yeah. so you don't have to pay millions and yep. they're living or yep. do it at the right time before you're worth the amount that, or yeah. try to use some exception, try to do something. So, you so don't pay if you much. can do me a favor and make sure Bitcoin doesn't like soar in the next, <laughs> you know, four months, I'd be really appreciative of that. If so. it stays at 60 K yeah, for like yeah, a year. Yeah. Don't think that's going to happen <laughs> for sure. <laughs> You've been traveling through Europe mm -hmm. and both European Union and outside of the European Union for the last, let's say, two weeks. Yep. You've been to Serbia, mm -hmm. Poland, mm -hmm. Estonia, mm -hmm. Finland. Finland, you're going tomorrow. Yep. What's been your view? Because you haven't really traveled to this part of the world. I haven't. Right? What are countries that you've actually been to? Indonesia, Mexico? Oh, I've been to 32 countries. 32, oh. Right. But as far as uh, Europe, Iceland, Portugal, Spain... Mm. These would be the major countries, right? Uh, I've never been to Eastern Europe. I've never been to this side of, you know, Europe, and so it's 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 an eye opener, you know. I even just with even with Serbia, I didn't recognize like the geopolitics because I was younger when a lot of stuff happened. Um, but there's a lot of culture here, uh, and I just never knew that, and I, I really appreciate it. And what was your view overall of Serbia? Spending time in in Serbia, being there, you met People some couple can call celebrities. Me crazy, I love it. You know, throw up your seat threes you know what i mean uh no i i'm funny with with that but uh i do i i really appreciate serbia um i really love the culture i love the family values um i love the faith that they have mm. and um i like that they're they're trying to preserve their way of life as long as they can and i appreciate that and that's one of the things that you don't like about the united states the wokeness the let's say Kind of indoctrination, honestly, yeah, that was happening. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I tell a lot of my clients because they're like, why do you want to leave the U.S.? You're making so much money. You're, you know, you can go anywhere you want to go. And I tell them, you know, for me, the United States and America are two different things. Mm. America is an ideology. It represents freedom. The United States is a corporation that no longer aligns with my values. And if we really look at our country and how it developed, you know, they renounced their British citizenship in a way. Right. And, and, and no taxation without representation. And it's getting really crazy with the taxes and how the, the rich are punished and demonized in the press. Right. And so for me, I'm appreciative of the United States for what it gave me. I had a lot of opportunity living and being born here. I like to just say I've outgrown it this phase of my life. I appreciate it. That's why I want to give it to my daughter. I do love the United States for what it's given me. But at this time, 
it no longer represents my values or my morals. And I want to raise my daughter in a non-woke society. I really want to give her that. I think that that's really important as a father, to father her with values that I represent. And so that's what we're doing. And the countries where you see yourself living, let's say the next five to 10 mm. years, let's say potentially you get the Mexican passport mm -hmm. by naturalization from birth. Your child's Mexican, your wife's Mexican. You also have another citizenship. Your child has four passports. You renounce your U.S. citizenship. Where do you see yourself living? Well, um, I would consider Eastern Europe. Mm. I would consider it. Um, I don't want to close the door on that. But I really love Dubai for the networking. And I love, honestly, I love living in Arab nations. The other one that I am very big on is Malaysia. Um, I would never have citizenship there, but doing the VIP program, not even the MM2H, but the VIP program allows you to work there, allows you to sponsor people to live there. Um, and it's like a 20 year visa that you can renew. There's even a path to permanent residency with that, which is pretty cool. Um, and I absolutely love Kuala Lumpur and I love it because of the, you know, the, the diversification of the cultures of the Indian, the Malay, the Chinese. It's centrally located in, in Southeast Asia to get anywhere in Asia and the Middle East. Um, it's incredibly affordable. It's high tech. The food is amazing. And um, I'm just I'm just sold on KL, man. I love it. I, and my wife is Indonesian, so the fact that we can take a direct flight to her small island in Indonesia is very valuable to me. Uh, but I really like having an idea of having actually three flags, having, you know, Malaysia as a home, Dubai as a, as a hub as well. And then even in South America, I'm a big fan of Paraguay. I really am. I think Paraguay has been represented wrongly by some people. And, and I've been in Paraguay and I absolutely love Paraguay. I think the Paraguayan people are amazing. I think it's pro-freedom, uh, able to own a gun there. You're able to eat steak for like five bucks, you know, drink the best wine in Argentina down there. And the people are just amazing, you know? So I, I'm a big fan of Paraguay. I actually look to do a lot of uh, investing into Paraguay. And I've actually have permanent residency there as well. So you have the PR already. Yeah. I already went through that. Okay. So you already have two Latin American permanent residencies. Yes. yes. Going to get the Malaysian one. Indonesia, I'm not really sure how it works. I already have that through marriage. Okay. Yeah. So when you marry an Indonesian, you mm -hmm. actually are able to set up a business. Okay. Which is a little bit different. Normally you can't do that with like a, like a kitas. Like I have a family kitas. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't have to do like a golden visa or anything like that. Um, and so how, how that works is when you're married for two years, then you can go into permanent residency, what they call a key top, right. right? And then eventually, um, if you wanted to naturalize, you could. Uh, I'm just not going to do that, but I'm fine with permanent residency in Indonesia. I think, and this is what I tell people too, the Asian countries are up and coming, right? The Cambodias, the Indonesias, the Malaysias, the Philippines. Uh, I, I just feel like with crypto and blockchain and AI and the disruption that these things are going to be in our world. I feel like our world is going to become smaller, become more one. And I feel like all the playing fields are going to equal out in my opinion. So I want to have diversification everywhere. So it's not only the United States, the best place to go. No, nah, nah. I mean, we got yeah. some, we got some cool sports. We got some great entertainment. We're great at marketing and America is absolutely beautiful. I've been to all 50 States. I loved Alaska. Bozeman, Montana is amazing. I lived I personally live right now in Las Vegas until I renounce. So the networking is great in Vegas, but I'm telling you right now, what's what's horrible, Raphael, is when I fly back to Vegas and people say, welcome back. And I'm like, I'm not, I, I really like, I, why am I here, right? My wife can't get into this country. Why am I here? I'm getting taxed like crazy for being successful and I don't even step foot in this country. Why am I here? You're technically still residing in, in America, but you're mostly yeah out out i have a residency and in, in like i have a home that i pay for in in america yeah for mailing purposes and business purposes but that will be ending soon got it so the main home is probably going to be either mexico malaysia indonesia yeah. one of those three yeah yeah in not indonesia but yeah okay yeah not indonesia <laughs> probably mexico, mexico dubai or malaysia yeah. dubai also apart from the networking let's say attracts you from dubai specifically because dubai is usually i love dubai mm -hmm. i promoted it many times but it's usually kind of the first step for mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. for you, you already have, I would say, four flags planted, yeah. one citizenship, three permanent residencies. 
what's attracting you from Dubai? So I love the I love the networking. Number one, network is net worth, hundred percent. You're having the baddest and the biggest in Dubai. It's the center of the world. I also love Saudi a lot too. Uh, and with Dubai embracing crypto, that you can purchase real estate with crypto, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're building like crazy. You know, real estate is a great asset to have. I wouldn't set up, up I wouldn't set up a business in Dubai, but I would go for a golden visa in Dubai, purchase real estate, rent that out if I wanted to rent that out, live there if I wanted to live there. And now I have a flag in Dubai. I'm able to use the banking system. I'm able to get the healthcare. I'm able to integrate into the culture. And that type of golden visa is looked better upon than other types of forms, in my opinion. Um, and so I just really feel like there's only so much land in the UAE. And there's only so much land in, in in Dubai. There's also projects that you can get into that they're developing in 28, 29, 30. And there's some pretty interesting programs with that as well. So with me being a credit and a leverage guy, um, I just feel like there's a lot of opportunity for me to, to, to make a lot of money and to make a lot of impact and build a big network in Dubai. I also like the fact that the, the food is amazing. Uh, I wouldn't miss anything in Las Vegas because I have it in Dubai. And I also, again, I love the UAE because of family values, right? Even when I, even though I'm not personally Muslim, I do appreciate uh, the Adan and I appreciate the call to prayer because it, it's a reminder to stay disciplined and to remember where you come from. And so I really appreciate these things within Muslim culture. Yeah, I would say Muslim countries, when people say Muslim countries, it's we're not comparing Syria and yes, UAE. Yes, correct, you know, correct. Some people say, oh, why do you recommend Muslim countries? And yeah. it, it's a bit funny. hundred percent. So I would say we're not, hey, we're not, we're not sleeping with ISIS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we're not, we're not in those places. hundred percent. I would say these countries that are Muslim, but they're not uh, basically destroyed or they're properly developed and they have good culture like Malaysia, mm -hmm. UAE and other Muslim countries. And they're also pretty safe. Like right, that's, so. that's why you chose, I'm assuming for the birth or if you can tell me why you chose La Paz specifically yeah. in Baja California. Yeah. So La Paz, everybody watching, Google Belandra Bay. After you watch this video, don't click off on this video. It's beautiful. Okay. But after this video, look up Belandra Bay. It is the gem of, I want to say Mexico. I'm going to go all out and say, I love the Baja. It's like Arizona with a beach. I think uh, if I would have put my wife in anywhere else, she would have been a little stressed out, right? Uh, but being able to have a baby on a beautiful beach that looks like a Corona commercial and where you can actually have a birth. I think my birth that I paid for the hospital with 5D ultrasounds and they filmed the whole thing was like four to five thousand dollars. Great, great doctors from English speaking, high, English and, yeah. and, 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 and uh, Spanish speaking as well, if you speak Spanish. But yes, uh, dual dual uh, language there. Um, and. It was it was really nice because it's not a tourist location per se. It's more of a small town in Mexico, and it's a couple hours north of Cabo San Lucas. So it's very it's very westernized with the Baja in general. And it was a place that I went to before, and it's absolutely stunning. They call it the Marina of the World. Uh, it's been called the Marina of the World. There's there's so much um, whales there. The the killer whale, the orcas, the the humpbacks, the gray whales, the blue whales, the the dolphins, the sea lions. To have that a part of like that whole process and just have beautiful Mexican sunsets and I have a beautiful home on the beach uh, and I, I feel like atmosphere is really important. So in this season, I really wanted to give stability. But at the same time, this has given me the ability to go back and forth to handle my affairs in America, to tie up my end, end thing. I can easily go back to America as I'm wrapping up what I need to wrap up as an American. Um, so that's why La Paz. And that's a great point that you made that you're an American who essentially apart from your citizenship and your business, which I would say your business does rely on the American market mm -hmm. in, in many ways, and mm -hmm. it does rely on the American credit system mm -hmm. in many ways. You mm -hmm. couldn't just set up shop in Georgia right. <laughs> and do the same thing you right. do right now. Right. So it does rely on the US. You're still a US citizen, but you see how he has pretty much everything else outside of the US. Mm -hmm. So at any point you could renounce because mm -hmm. you have another passport. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to get another one. Mm -hmm. You have four permanent residencies. And great locations. At great locations. Your child already set up for life. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I try to tell people is, sure, remain in your country or still do business in your country. 
but set up everything else outside. And I, yeah. I, I love how you did that. Yeah. In today's age, content creation, what it's done for you, what it's done for myself, your channel's got close to 200,000, or if not more after this podcast, mine's going to 200,000. So we have the ability to create content anywhere in the world. Uh, and with cryptocurrency and AI and everything that's going on, you literally can design your life like nobody else in human history. And that's a privilege and that's an honor. Um, and anybody can do that from any country once they have these skill sets. So I, 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 I'm excited to, to actually have the weight and stress and anxiety of the United States off my back. And I know that you know that better than anybody. I remember calling you and saying, hey, man, how did you, how did you feel when you got naturalized? Because it's like a shedding of an identity and a birth of another identity. Even though like you were never born in these countries that you have citizenships in, they embraced you. They said yes to you. They said, be part of us. And that is, uh, that is very emotional because it's like, wow, let me appreciate these people. Let me add value to these people. These people took me in. Um, here we treat these countries like trash. Like you take away Mexicans from the United States, the United States falls apart, right? Mexico is, I would argue Mexico is even more integrated than the United States than Canada is, right? Uh, it's just, we love their food. You always have a Chinese restaurant and a Mexican restaurant in any small town in America. So, and just even the Serbian people, like uh, all different types of people out there, all different countries out there, Turkey, all types of places, you know, we, we are not so kind to people around the United, uh, around the world, and we're indoctrinated in America to, to think this way or think that way, and this person's bad because we say so. And when you leave that, like they embrace you, and it's like, oh, you're American. Oh, okay, they, they like you, but they're not too fond of America. But <laughs> it's just, man, it, it's the world has changed, you know. And I tell people too, I have a huge uh, network of people that have come from other countries that, you know they crossed the Rio Grande to get here and they were brought here by the coyotes and all types of things. And why would I leave here when my person went through this to get here? And I tell them, I understand that, but it's not the same world anymore. You're dealing with a different United States. And so in my opinion, like I said, I'm not hating on the United States of America. It's just not for me. I outgrew it. Uh, it's a place of opportunity, uh, but there's other places of opportunity. And America, again, America, I take with me wherever I go. I'm a born Buckeye from Ohio. It means freedom to me, freedom of life, liberty, and happiness. And you could say you found that freedom somewhere else I in did. some ways. Yeah. And that's, it applies to pretty much any Western country. If you're from the UK or mm -hmm. any major European country like Germany, mm -hmm. you can do all of this. Yeah. Still remain in your country or still have some ties. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to exit, you exit and you let's say, exercise that freedom that you've been preparing for, mm -hmm. which you prepared really well for. Hey, you led me the right way, right? right? I, I also think that that's part of, uh, when, you're, when you're dealing, anybody watching this video is probably thinking about doing some of these things, whether it's lowering your taxes, whether it's renouncing, whether it's getting citizenships or whatever. You have to ask yourself this, there's a lot of people in the industry, right? And there's a lot of people that are gonna promise you the world and they're gonna tell you time frames. they're gonna tell you this. I, I mean, I can tell you this right now. Uh, I went through one situation with Raphael and uh, he over delivered in every single thing. It was delayed process. slightly, but it doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter. Uh, he was clearly communicating. Uh, his team is uh, when the whole process of what I went through, uh, what I went through with Raphael was nothing but less than exceptional. It speaks to your integrity. You do things the right way. You don't over promise you over deliver. And, nobody's perfect right and you're going to make mistakes but if there's any mistake that you ever make or your team make they instantly get solved and that speaks to your customer journey and what you do and what you build and how you move and i would say that separates Raphael and wealthy expat from other agencies because the problem with agencies is is a lot of times you're just a number and a lot of times it's just, oh, we can do it. Let's take your money and we'll deliver when we can. They don't have the control. It comes down to the connections on the ground. Wealthy Axe has done the due diligence. He's built the relationships on the ground to secure it. And this is the thing. When you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars, trust is a big thing. What is trust worth to you? I went through another agency. Uh, I'm glad I went through it for a learning process to see what to do, what to not do. But me just going through that process, I am still appreciative of it because it led me to you. 
And had I not been in that process, searching for more information and finding your free group with 3,000 people in there and what you're talking about and how you're freely giving information, these things speak values. But you don't have a scarcity mindset. You're not over-promising and under-delivering. You're being fair. You're making money. That's how things should be. This is not a charity, right? And you have to live. And this is what it's called is just doing good business is, is amazing. Um, and so even just how the whole process was handled, I'm not going to get into it with the podcast. It's out of you know discretion. But I, I just I, 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 I felt honored to work with you. Thank you. Yeah. And even though it was slightly delayed, because a lot of people, when they're doing, let's say, permanent residency by mm -hmm. investment or by exception or some sort of special business plan that they submit to a government, mm -hmm that they're going to build a business in that country or hire people in that country. Mm -hmm. It's up to a guy to sign a paper. Yep. And that signature can be three days or it can be three months or, or three, three years. years in some cases. And for example, if you were to get a, like Panama, right, <laughs> right. Or even places like Turkey, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. some people say, oh, it takes three months to get Turkey. Actually, Erdogan's got it. I mean, the, the president has to sign it. No, no? not at that level. But okay. the actual program takes almost a year and a half at wow. this point. And that's after you buy the property. Man. Because there's too many people buying it. Oof. And D Dominica, Antigua, St. Kitts, all these programs, oh, 45 days, it's not going to be 45 days. Now with, with access to Europe, yeah. and it's going to take a lot longer. You think El Salvador will ever come out with a citizenship by, outside of the Bitcoin thing that they have now? No, nah, that's that's going to stay. Because yeah. there's there's over a thousand people that have done it. We have clients that have done it. Yeah, They pay the million and five days later they have a passport. Yeah. They're not going to lower that yeah. probably just because there's so many people interested. Yeah. What they might do is some sort of golden visa where you get the citizenship maybe in five, 10 years yeah. without living there. But this program is working really well for them. I, so. I love El Salvador. One thing I was going to mention to people that may get overlooked a lot when you have a child born on uh, a Latin American country that was formerly you know, conquered by Spain, they can get residencies and passports sometimes quicker than people that, that can't, right, with the whole spain thing and all different types of things so it's really valuable to to if you're if you're pregnant or you want to have a family even if you're american and you just say you know what i may not be into this renunciation thing these guys are crazy go have your baby in a mexican hospital you know save money give your baby a plan b you get a plan b for crying out loud your parents can also get pr the moment the grandparents can actually get it it's a for every American, it's a no-brainer to have your children in Mexico, in my humble opinion, because the baby is getting two two passports, and that baby can take if that baby wants to go to Spain and study in Spain, and and they're a resident for so long, then they can apply for a naturalization path that they want to, and we don't know where Spain's going to be. It's a high tax country, but maybe they want to go to El Salvador, maybe they want to go to Argentina. These are options that you get when you have a baby on Latin American soil. I think it looks it's overlooked a lot and you don't know how these countries are going to look like in 10 years like 100%. el salvador might be at the level of a very developed country in 10 years well, kelly is a hero of mine yeah. man uh what he's done with cleaning up the whole country is remarkable so uh, you know I, I love what javier malay is doing down there in argentina you know i love what paraguay is doing i mean i hate to see what, where chile is going but i love chile as well so i i just think that i think people just need to go travel <laughs> Okay, go travel and go meet people and don't don't just stay in these hotels, like go into these places and people watch and say hello and have conversations and just see if this is a place that could work for you. Because, you know, I, I look at these housing prices, I look at the inflation, I look at just everything going on in America and Canada and Australia. And I'm like, how do these people live? Like my wife will tell me to go to the store and get something. I'm, I'm paying like hundreds of dollars in America. Right. And I'm like, man, in Mexico, this is way better. I mean, it's still a little pricey with inflation, but still it's way better. So you guys can build the life that you want. It's lifestyle design. And you have to be like really like open and, 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 and look at not just the micro, but the macro, have a micro plan, have a macro plan. Awesome. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being in the studio here. I appreciate you. Thank you. And if you want to see how Dan and other clients are getting these second passports, these residencies, what countries they're choosing, I made a whole video explaining the best countries that our clients choose, where wealthy people around the world go to, and how to go to those places. Check out this video right here. Keep learning, and I'll see you on the next one.